I'm gonna feast on milk and honey one of these days, one of these days. And all God's children are gonna sit together. All God's children are gonna sit together one of these days. Hallelujah. All God's children are gonna sit together. Gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days, one of these days. All right, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Daniel. That was beautiful. I love that song. It's a good one. You know what it reminds me of is Dinner Church. That's right. Sitting around the table. I wonder if we're going to start that this fall. I think so. We'll see what happens. Sitting around the welcome table. Welcome to all of you sitting here in the room and joining us online. We're so glad to have you all with us. Special Sunday. It is the report of the main mission team. There were uh, 29 of us, maybe even 32, depending on how you count. Well, lucky counts. Lucky count. Lucky the dog counts. <laughs> That's right. Uh, up in Maine uh, this past week. And so uh, part of the team is here. Part of it is online. Uh, joining us to see the slideshow and hear from five team members about how the how the day went so, or the week went. So I'm going to ask you a quick question to kind of stick in your mind to meditate over, and then I'll give you an outline of how the service will go. Sam, uh, which which part of your body do you think is the most important part? Well, my brain says it's the most important part. <laughs> I mean, the brain is biased, I think. Yeah, a little bit, right, but, the, but brain the brain's is, like, I'm so awesome. That's true. Yeah. Which part of the body do you think is the most important? All right, what we're going to do this morning is we are going to have a quick children's moment. And I think that, Bobby, our, the special music is the song from the team. Right, quick children's moment this morning, and we'll read a scripture lesson. Lana is going to read that for us. And then we'll, um, you and I will talk just a little bit overview about the trip, but then we'll hear from five different team members. So team members in the room want you to hear this. This is the order, Calvin, Max, Bonnie, Kevin, Sally. It is also the order of age, okay? <laughs> uh, laugh from the group. All right, we're making it hardest on the oldest person. Well, because if Calvin says something, you are going to say you have time to think of uh, something else. That's right. That's who we're going to hear from. Then we'll see a PowerPoint presentation, of uh, pictures from during the week. And finally, a song from the team. We recorded it up there because we all scattered to the four winds. Uh, so some of us are here today, but a lot of us are also not here, it's only online. So well, our team song, Take Me Out to Machias. After that, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. So those of us in the building had uh, walked past the table with these little cups, uh, individual servings. Make sure you have that. And if you're at home, get uh, milk, uh, milk, <laughs> milk and cookies for Santa. My poor brain. Uh, get something like juice and bread uh, that you have on hand at home. You can use that to celebrate Holy Communion. After that, we'll have offering and announcements, uh, celebration and thanks. And the pastoral prayer, the prayer of the people will be at the end. That means you have all during the service to drop your prayer requests into the comments. Uh, we encourage you, even if you don't have a prayer request, say hello to the people in the comments. If you're in the room, greet people coming in online. Uh, let us know that you're here online by doing that, by commenting or sending an emoji. And then we'll have one final song. All right. It's going to be beautiful. That's the plan. Let's ask God's blessing on our service. Lord God, we're glad to be here today. We're glad for this beautiful season and sunny weather. We are glad for the good work that you put to our hands, God. We ask that you would always help us to notice and serve the world around us. Bless the service of worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so for the children. Can, oh, we want, we want Instagram for the children today, so let me just cue that up. And it's one of the weird things about COVID is children's stuff, you know? How do you... Oh, yeah. All right, it's going to be great. It is. It's going to be fantastic. There we go, live. Okay. Can I tell you a funny story before I start the children's moment? I was visiting a family that, um, you know, with little kids, they're not vaccinated, right? And so parents feel yes or no sometimes about bringing them to church. And so I was visiting a family uh, that hasn't come to the building uh, much recently, and they have a real little one. And uh, she's about uh, a year and a half now, or two, maybe. Very, very verbal. As, very, very verbal. As little girls are, right? And I come up, and uh, her mom says, look, it's Pastor Rachel. And she looks at me and says, 
do you know that there's a Pastor Rachel at my church too? <laughs> and I said, it has been a long time. It's been a long yeah, time. It's been a long so time. Great. But I wanted to show the kids something this morning. And that is something that I brought back from Maine. I'm going to show you. It says Maine Sea Salt. You see that? This is that fancy kind of salt that has a grinder on it. You turn it upside down and go rut, 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 rut. Maine Sea Salt. When we were up in Maine, a few of us stopped by a place that's very close to the campground where we stay where they make salt. How do you make salt? You dry the seawater. That's exactly right. They take water from the ocean and they put it in very long, flat um, fields almost, right? They're made of black plastic so it heats up. And they put it under a dome of plastic and so it heats up inside there, kind of like a greenhouse. Okay. If you've been in a greenhouse. And all the water, just water, comes out of that steaming and lands on the ceiling and then it drips down the sides and goes out. And so what happens? when that heat and that, that evaporation happen, is that the water gets saltier and saltier and saltier because all the fresh water is coming out. And finally, you only have salt crystals left. There you go. And then you can shovel it with a shovel. And wow. it's beautiful and white. It's gorgeous. This happened to me um, on my arm after I went in the ocean. And then my arm dried up, and I had little white lines from all the salt. Yeah, it happens when you go in the ocean, too, yes. right? It dries onto your skin. It's kind of like that. And so they dry out the ocean water, and they get salt. And then they, this one is just plain salt, but they also put some flavors in it and things. They actually smoke it on like a barbecue. Like hickory yeah, salt, yeah. which somebody might be getting. Mm. As a Christmas. I might have loaded up on some Christmas presents. Yeah. It was really, really neat. And so what we did when we went is they said, what type of salt would you like at the gift shop? And I said, well, I don't know what type of salt I would like. I don't know what they taste like. This plain, I know. But I don't know how the hickory or the mesquite or the garlic. So they sprinkled some salt into my hand like that. And I went, yeah. And it was so salty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Too much salt. It was only a tiny little bit of salt in my hand. But it was so much salt, it was so strong. Have you ever licked salt? Have you ever just put a little bit of salt into your hand and put your tongue on it? Oh my goodness, it's so strong, even the tiniest little amount. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. Yeah, that's maybe where Eva gets it from. Yeah. No, hers is Splenda. Oh, well, there's that. Different, different children's moment. It was so strong. I was really glad that I brought a water bottle with me so that I could taste a number of different types of salt without like shriveling and drying up because it was so salty. Do you know that Jesus said that we are like salt? He did not say we are salty. He said we are like salt to the world. That when we are kind to one another and kind to others, when we are generous, when we love people, even just a little bit, that it has a huge impact, just like the little tiny bit of salt was so strong. If we can just bring a little bit of God's love and God's kindness into the world, that makes a very, very, very big difference. But it's not the difference that goes back. Right, right. It's the difference that makes life better for other people and for ourselves. So I learned that lesson one more time, tasting my main sea salt. They should now give me a cut since I'm promoting their product. This is available online. Also at Hannaford. And at Hannaford. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Got to cover everything. That's right. Fine salt retail tailors everywhere. Well, it's good for the people who, you know, all your foodie friends who have everything. That's right. Yes. So let's have a quick word of prayer. God, thank you for promising us that we can be like salt, that we can make a huge impact just by doing a little bit. Help us to be loving to this world so that it might transform this world and make it a better place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Bye-bye, Instagram. I forget how to do it. There we go. All right. So this morning we have a scripture lesson. This is one of the devotions that we, the May Mission team had. This was the Friday devotion, and it will be read to us by Lana. Oh, except we need a camera up there, so go ahead. In just a moment. Lana was a first-timer on our trip this year. Yeah, we had seven first. Oh, it turned oh, off. Oh, the battery. Okay, oh, so give me that. No, no, we'll do it later. Okay, a little hold music, this technological. Right. With the misspelling, great. Okay, awesome. Everyone go on Instagram and complain about my misspelling. <laughs> there we go. All right, 
Here we go. Lana and Sally were um, cooks this year, which is fantastic. Usually Rachel's done all the cooking for the team. Um, so you'll see some uh, in the slideshow later on of them in the kitchen that they were working in. That's right, invaluable. Our two Southern Bells were making food. Nothing like some Southern cooking, huh? All right, Lana, you are on. Okay. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 20 and 27. Thank you, Lana. All right, you can camera off there, Calvin. I'd like to welcome Calvin, Max, Bonnie, Kevin, and Sally to, to transition up here while we're speaking. All right, so my goodness. It was a great year. This was our 17th year going up to Maine. Um, last year, we're going to count it. We did a mini Maine locally because of COVID, but 17th year doing this type of ministry and mission. Uh, 29 of us went, which is real close to the maximum of 30 that we've ever had, which is amazing in the year after. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, from ages 10 to 88. So there we go. Ages 10 to 88. Six of us on the team have been almost every year. And that is two Fisher parents and two Spicer parents, and then little Wesley, who's now big Wesley, and uh, little Noah Spicer, who's now big Noah Spicer, have been almost every year. Uh, seven people came for the first time, which is great. Every year we have first timers. We had four people come who live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. How do you like that? The Davis family that moved away a couple years ago, vacations in Maine, and they, they have a camp in Bangor, and they realized it was going to be the same time they would be around, and the girls would be done with camp. And so they said, hey, can we come join you? So we sent them the address, which is kind of tricky, because there is no address. Because address. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Campground Road, which doesn't really narrow it down. Look for the blank sign and the real tall pine tree and turn right. right. It used to be look for the paint spill in the road, but that finally got repaved. <laughs> yeah. But they joined us. Also, we had uh, Wesley's girlfriend, Anna. Aiden Kennedy and Lana. For the very and Aiden first. helped last year when he did the local, but it was his first time in up Maine. there. We had skill levels all the way from a retired contractor. Is he a contractor or a general? A uh, contractor. Contractor. Guy who knows everything, Steve Garneau, right? Literally everything. He was like a teacher. Skill levels all the way down to I may have hold, held a paintbrush in art class. Yeah. Right? like all the whole gamut. We were able to work on six unique projects during the week in six days. We had a kitchen crew that provided 230 plus hot meals during the week. You like mm -hmm. that? How do you like those numbers? Did you know that, people? They're both, both up here today, Lana and Sally. And over 130 lunches. And over how many lobster? Oh, 27 lobsters. Over 27 lobsters. <laughs> yeah. Which one of the team was the most important? Which part of the body is the most important? Lana helped us answer that question when she read the scripture. When Paul was writing to the church in Corinth, he's like, the church is like uh, your, your body. You can't say that I don't need this finger or I don't need that toe, right? All of it is part of the body. Each part of the body has a different gift. And so we had people who were contributing in all sorts of different ways. As I said, we had people who were skill, very skilled, knowledgeable, were teachers in the construction. Um, we had people who helped to feed us. We had people who were great encouragers we are really good at listening or storytelling or telling jokes, right? Max is actually one of those people. No pressure, Max. 
Oh, Max where is he? Here. No. Oh. He said he was going to come yesterday, so. Yeah, that's really funny, Max. Big joke. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Okay. No, Max. That is okay. Hopefully he's joining us online. Um, yeah, really good joke. Well, you tell some good jokes. No, not as good as Max. Not as good as Max. All right. People who took pictures so that we'd have a good record. We had people who basically were step and fetch it. I was pretty good at that. Can you go get that? Sure. I'll Run down it. to the hardware store and get this. Okay, 45 minutes later, you've arrived at the hardware store. That's right. It's so spread out. Or like go get the, you know, Phillips head screwdriver, whatever. Yeah, and we had people who were noticers, people who were just good at noticing what needed to be done and stepping up and being willing to do it. So that whole team, we needed every single one of them to be who we were. One of the things we did at the end of the week was um, each of us had a piece of paper. It was blank in the beginning and wrote the team member's name at the very top. You can see my name, Rachel, there. And we were able to go around with pen. We had to put them on a couple tables and write something we appreciated about that person or noticed about that person during the week. And those are available on the back table for the whole team as you leave today. Um, but that is a message from the team to you specifically who were there about why you are an important part of the body and why we value you so much. So there we are. With uh, no further ado, I would like us to hear from the team. All right, which camera are we using? Uh, Calvin has the camera up there, right? Okay. And he will be first. Uh, my name is Calvin Fisher, and I was a part of the mission team um, this year, and it was my first year actually working on the work sites up in Maine. And I'd say some of the highlights were um, seeing the whole team come together to work as one, seeing friends, and learning new skills. I think one of the particular skills that I learned that I'm um, pretty proud of, but still afraid of slightly, is using a nail gun got to do it right, because if you do it wrong, either this is a nail through something that you weren't supposed to hit, or possibly no nail through anything at all. So it, it takes a little bit of mastery, but I, I'm sure I'll get it down some, at some point. If you stand about here, you get center camera. Um, my name is Bonnie Spicer. This is, I think, my 15th out of the 17 trips. Um, and we were asked about three favorites. And my three favorites, in no specific order, were the Cooks, Claire, and Serena. Now, we were supposed to ask for things, but I will elaborate quickly. The Cooks, the food was awesome, and we didn't have to prepare it ourselves. So there is nothing like coming back from a hard days of work, climbing on roofs, um, covered with insulation or whatever, and uh, being able to just take a shower and walk in and have a wonderful meal right in front of you. And for those of you who are not morning people, um, after my four cups of coffee, I walk over and I'm fed this wonderful warm hot breakfast. It's fantastic. Um, the second, um, Claire was one of the four people who arrived. Now, I asked. I was allowed to say this. Um, Claire, her first, when she first arrived, she kind of hung with mom and was really close to her mom. And by the end of the day, this girl was a billy goat on the roof. And she was fantastic. She was careful. Um, but she and her sister were up on a very steep, the steepest roof I've ever been on, and I've been on several. Um, and she was up there nailing, putting, um, putting the pieces in place. She was wonderful. And it was really cool to see her go from very shy to very assertive. And the last, uh, Serena, was a woman who um, had a little, little tiny house, and she was given four months' notice from her current landlord at a rental house that she needed to move. And so she had to get this shell of a tiny house winterized and ready in four months. And we're talking literally shell, no electricity, no plumbing, no, in no insulation. And she just needed manpower. And uh, about a half a dozen of us went over there and did about a day and a half work for her and her nephew 
in a matter of you know six hours and that was really great and um, Serena is also I'm a social worker she's a social worker we bonded and it was really fun I'm Kevin Spicer and I feel like I've been on every mission trip because I get involved way before the mission trip starts. You know, we collect tools, we look at projects and stuff. And so um, even when I wasn't there, I felt like I was there. And I, I hope that that extends out to everybody that when you're here in North Reading or around the t this area and we're up in that, up in Maine, you, you, we're representing you as well. You know, by all your contributions, just your support, your prayers. Um, it's just wonderful to know that there's more behind us than the 30 people who you know, went up there and did work. My favorite three things, um, Rachel's already talked about it and Calvin's already talked about it, but I think it, it can be said again, is watching the growth of this team. Um, one from year one, 2005 or three or whatever, when we first got there that year, we could paint, <laughs> you know, we could, we could paint. And nobody knew much about us and we didn't know much about what we were doing. We were all, con you know, where do we find paintbrushes? Where's everything? And you look at us today, when we arrive, we're, we're now somewhat of a powerhouse of a, a mission team. We're up there, we, we know where we're going, we know the roads, we know where the tools are. Even the youngest in our group seems to have, catches the rhythm of the mission trip. You get up, you have breakfast, you pull your tools together, you pull your teams together, and um, it just seems, you just watch this thing, it's like a well-oiled machine now. And even within the week, we start with a little rough at the beginning, and then by the end, these teams are, you know, they're ready to, ready to go by quarter of eight in the morning, we're already on our way to the, the projects. So I, I love seeing that growth. Second, um, we had the great opportunity to have um, a, a community member bring a video of the camp that we stay at, which apparently started somewhere around 1855 or 1853, we're not exactly sure. But it's an old camp, it's got a ton of history, and he was able to obtain a video of it in 1952. And it was hilarious to watch, it was just funny, the bathing suits and the, the style of hair and you know, watching these kids, it was a, a video about the youth camp that was held there. And what I loved about it was, one, it was just interesting to watch, but watching our group take interest in that and, and ask questions and relevant things about what was it like back then and watching how happy that community member was to see our interest in his old camp. So I think that was a really nice moment. And the third thing is uh, every evening after we get back from work and we have supper, we get to um, get together for about a 30 minute meeting and we, we do a prayer and we, we, uh, Rachel does a devotional and we then get to share, um, we sing, and then we get to share a little bit about how each project uh, team went and so we get to hear, we're divided up, we actually went to three different uh, sites in one day and that shows you how great this, this crew is, is that we were always afraid to, no we gotta keep us all together so we can get the work done. Now we're going out to three different jobs in one day, split up, and you know, our, our experience is all spreading out in the different areas. But hearing the stories, and then hearing the stories about the, the, um, the trips, the field trips that everyone went on, on our Wednesday afternoon, where we cut the work short, just hearing how much fun everybody had going to Ray's Mustard Factory, and Monica's Chocolate, and Quaddy Point, the lighthouses. Just, it was cool to hear all the stories. Uh, I'm Sally Meredith. This was my third time on the mission trip. Uh, previously, I had gone out on the construction sites and did a little painting and a little step and fetch it, but the part of the body I felt like was more like the wisdom teeth or the appendix. You know, you can take them out and you wouldn't miss them. Uh, <laughs> And, and I guess, you know, I'm somebody who likes to feel like they're actually accomplishing something. So uh, this year, Rachel decided that she thought it would be fun to go out on the uh, work sites instead of being in the kitchen cooking. So 
She got brave and made me swear I would not hide zucchini in anything <laughs> or do any of my other trademark weird recipes. And, and Rachel did the food shopping for quantity and recruited Lana uh, to work in the kitchen as well. So Rachel was very brave. You can ask her after the service what she thought of the construction sites instead of the kitchen. But I knew Lana had a million stories and I heard a lot of them. And she heard <laughs> as many of mine <laughs> because we can both hold up our end of the conversation. Uh, I knew Lana was, had good stories and I knew, I suspected Lana was a hard worker and now I know that that's true and Lana is also a good cook. So uh, we worked well together. We would have slept more if we had talked less. Uh, but, you know, it was fun. It was a different kind of activity. It was not construction site, and while it wasn't the focus of the trip, without the food, you know, the focus of the trip would go out of focus as well. So all the parts, I felt like one of the useful and, you know, generally necessary parts of the body um, at this at this this thing, it was a lot more fun, and I'm not a lot more likely to go back if they let me cook. And you know what? Some people don't like to cook, but if it had been up to me in Lana, there would have been no lobster, <laughs> because neither one of us had ever even seen a lobster cooked before. So we recruited Bonnie, and now we will tell you we are definitely never going to cook lobster. You know, you put them in the pot and the lobster, you put on the lid, the lobster kicks the lid off. It is just gross. <laughs> so, uh, Bonnie better go on the mission trips. If you want lobster, you gotta, gotta bring along a lobster cook. Okay, Daniel, Rachel says play the song now while the rest of us go sit down. <laughs> We have entered into a time to celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, you are invited, if you are joining us from home, to get something like juice and bread uh, to celebrate communion with. And in the building, we have uh, these little individual serving cups. I will read through the prayer of blessings, and then we'll stay in our seats to receive communion this morning. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those online with us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread. This is the body of Christ. Amen. I invite you to take the cup. This is the cup of salvation. Amen. Uh, Daniel, I hope you'll give me just a little bit of walking music to get back to my seat. Thank you to the whole team uh, for sharing your stories so that others can know and hopefully be thinking to themselves right now, I would really like to go on that trip. Speaking of the trip, yes. did you want to see the slideshow? Oh yeah, we've got a great slideshow. It took a while. It was When we first started, it was going to be like 12 minutes of really fast images of stuff. So we cut it down to <laughs> seven and a half image, and there's like houses, there's roofs, there's shingling, there's cooking. You'll see it all. There's a monarch butterfly caterpillar. There's the Canadian border. Um, <laughs> what else? We may have trespassed. There's some salt. Yeah. Um, yeah, some beaches. So. so we want you to enjoy the slideshow. Um, and friends on Facebook, put it in the um, comments if it shows up or not, so we can make sure. Yes, we want to make sure our Facebook viewers get to see. All right, Daniel, hopefully I've given you time to uh, cue that up. There we are.
Awesome. Great job, everyone. There was a typo. Linda Watt noticed. Yes. Um, we wrote 2020 at the beginning instead of 2021. Well, that's because this was not the final version of the slideshow. This show. was the director's cut, which had bonus features and was missing the Canada photo, which is yeah. too bad. Yeah, we actually had a final version of that that we'll send out in the email that includes some. So check your church email. And, yes. Yes. Like, like you always do every week. Exactly. And the weather was great except for one day. And we did all inside stuff that day, which was fantastic. We did the drywall on the ceiling. It was raining outside, but it was perfect for doing inside stuff. And then all those cramped pictures of Bonnie and Gigi, that was the rainy day also. And the kitchen ceiling was the rainy day. Yep. And then in the one we sent out in the email, there'll be one picture of the Grant building with Kevin on a ladder um, fixing one little bit. Yes, more things to come. But thank you um, for sending in all the pictures and um, praying and supporting this team. Okay, so we are moving to a time of offering, um, which is, if you are online, there's a link that is dropping in the comments. You can uh, make a one-time gift there. I want to thank those of you online and in the building who are pledgers, uh, meaning that you make a commitment for recurring gifts. That really helps us. And there is an offering plate on the blue table here in the building. Thank you uh, for giving your gifts and encouraging this ministry. Uh, also, for announcements, um, hmm, two things. This coming Wednesday night, a small group from the church, I think a dozen of us, 11 or a dozen of us, are going to do a fundraiser for the St. Francis House, which is a homeless shelter in Boston. Um, the fundraiser is called the Shoes Cruise. Uh, it is a cruise around Boston Harbor, and so we'll be bringing shoe donations and having a cruise Wednesday night. Uh, there'll be a word for that group that's already signed up. We'll carpool and we'll figure it out. It'll be wonderful. So that is coming up. Also, in the comments today on Facebook and then in the email uh, coming out this week, you will see an invitation to something called a hospitality team, hospitality team. That is because the building is opening up again because people are feeling more confident because of vaccinations um, and people are starting to ask to host their events here in the church. This is one way that the church uh, makes, makes money is by renting the building. And we need a group of people who can say, hey, yeah, if I'm free on a certain day, I'm happy to come help either set up tables and chairs or help close up an event. Also, this fall, the whole fall, from mid-August to early November, uh, we're hosting North Reading Youth Cheerleaders here in the sanctuary during the week. And so part of hospitality to them is stacking up these chairs after the worship service and moving them out into the foyer so their mats can come down during the week. So we're looking to create teams of people to do that so that it's many hands and light work. Um, so there's a form that you can fill out uh, through the Facebook comment link or again in the church email. I would love to have, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 people who say, I'm sure I can't help every time, but maybe I could help sometimes and be part of a group providing hospitality and income. Uh, for the church that way. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. All right, celebration and thanks. Um, we will go ahead and thank uh, those who were our representatives up in Maine, uh, the mission team uh, who went up this past week, those who spent their time, the Maine mission team. As Kevin pointed out, and you've heard again and again, that team was supported by um, dozens and dozens and dozens of prayers and donators and, and everybody. So that whole team. Uh, for Oh, we've been uh, receiving your prayer requests uh, during the, the broadcast this morning. And so we are ready to do a pastoral prayer. You got some notes? Yeah. Oh. So we have those joys, those concerns, and then that. Huh. See, that sometimes prayer requests are announcements, too. <laughs> You're like, I didn't know that. All right, very good. All right, um, let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, it has been such an encouraging day uh, to be with your people here and across the internet. Uh, for people who are watching later, even God, I know that you bind us together by your Holy Spirit and you create a community here, and we are so blessed to be a part of it. God, you've encouraged us by the, the report of the main mission team, encouraged us that we all have a place in your body, that we have a gift to give and a way to serve. God, we thank you for that. This morning, God, we remember those for whom we're concerned. Uh, we pray for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction and those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God, and ask that you would provide peace and healing. 
We continue in prayer for Michael Boucher's parents and for Michael, who cares for them, for Barbara Schinnebarger and Daniel Schinnebarger's healing, for Joe Connors, who's in hospice care in his final days, and for Camille, who is caring for him. We pray for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice, also in hospice. God, we ask for your favor for Mike Davis's job search. Uh, now that he's retired from the Army, God, that he might find the right job at the right time. We pray for Kathleen Epstein, who has received a skin graft this past Wednesday. We ask for healing and that her body would accept that graft, that it would be successful and that she could return home. God, we uh, pray for Adam's, uh, Adam Tanner's dental procedure coming up tomorrow. And we pray for Dante Costantino, who's suffering permanent damage from his last TBI. God, there's many uh, joys among us this morning. We celebrate the work of the team and those who supported them. We celebrate a birthday uh, here this morning and ask that you would be with Jack in his upcoming year. We uh, celebrate uh, Aldersgate and North Reading friend Al Pereira as he embarks on a new chapter in his life. God, we celebrate the vaccination efforts domestically and globally. And God, just give us so much wisdom on uh, this Delta variant, Lord. Just to help us to do a good job with this. We, um, uh, yes, and, and those are all the things we celebrate this morning, Lord, and including the ones that rest in our heart. We ask God that you would hear us as we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. I think that's all I got. All right. Is that all you got? Check your email. Check your email for that. Yeah, especially the main mission team. I want those people who I know who are deeply invested in those photos uh, to see the final version because it's, uh, it's a little bit more thorough and a little less redundant and more orderly, all those things. That's right. But I'm fine, really, it's okay. <laughs> all, right. all right, so God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, wherever you are, whenever you tuned in, we're so glad to have you. We're so glad to have you all here today. Back over to you, Daniel. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, oh, bind us together with love. with cords that cannot be broken. 